I can't believe how far down the toilet America has been flushed. And a lot of it has to do with, and I hope that you understand, these globalists that have infiltrated every component, every department of our bureaucratic government, and I'm talking about uh, municipal, state, and federal level. And as you can see, folks, I mean, they're throwing everything they can at us. They're throwing everything they can at us. And what's really discombobulating is that the globalists have America in check right now. And what do I mean by that? I mean, folks, right now, people should be protesting the encroachment of our constitutional protected rights. This mask mandates, these you know ridiculous quarantines, these shutdowns of private businesses, folks. We should be out there in mass right now protesting. But guess what? The globalist and their mainstream media cohorts have convinced a portion of the population that there is, quote, systematic racism in America and, of course, exploited that knee-to-the-neck footage of George Floyd prior to him uh, being deceased. And by the way, there was fentanyl and there was all kinds of drugs in his system, but this is the American hero, folks. This is the new American hero, and if those of us that are law-abiding citizens want to protest against the government, we can't do it anymore. You want to know why? Because if we, as law-abiding citizens who are trying to protect our constitutional rights, end up protesting, we're going to be met by Black Lives Matter. We're going to be met by Antifa. And guess what? All they want to do is, quote, fuck shit up. That's their, that's their favorite phrase. We're going to go out there and we're going to fuck some shit up, dude. That's what we're going to do. We're just going to fuck some shit up. And guess what? People that are law-abiding citizens typically have a lot to lose. They have families, they've got livings, they've got houses, they've got they've got things that they have to lose. So this is a very unfortunate check situation that the globalists have us in when right now our rights are being trampled. Did you know that the the set has already been staged when it comes to a draconian lockdown of proportions that we couldn't even imagine? I want to say Cheers to all my friends out there in Australia, particularly in Melbourne, Australia. I don't know if you guys have been hearing, but they have the most strictest lockdown in the world. It is actually an example to see how long the Australian people in Melbourne are going to actually accept this crap. Now, in Melbourne, you have to be inside by a specific time. You can't invite anybody to your house or go to anybody's house. Okay, you can't uh, you can't do anything. You got to have a fucking permit to go outside justifying that you're just going to and from work. And by the way, uh, those are only, quote, essential businesses that are allowed to have employees to go to and from their homes. I mean, they are in complete and total lockdown. And I think that if my opinion, this is the globalist example in hopes of trying to see if the people of Melbourne, Australia will accept this, then most of the Western civilization will accept this. And by God, I I don't know why Western civilization has not woken up. I mean, do you understand that the world is changing and there are some characters that are in charge of major institutions that many of us depend on in this world, okay, that are at, or I should say behind all this nefarious shit that's happening right now to America and throughout the Western civilization. Now, all I've got to ask you folks is, In the midst of all this, did we just forget that China was the origin of this so-called COVID-19? Whether or not you believe it's a hoax or not, that's regardless. But have we forgotten that China are the culprits? They're the ones that, for whatever reason, either researched it in their Wuhan lab, which many have suspected, or let it get out because, I don't know, they were eating bats or koala ass or whatever whatever the hell theory you want to believe. But you don't hear one iota. You don't even hear one report referencing that the fact that the whole reason why we're in lockdown all over Western civilization is because of China. Now, why is this, folks? Because I'm telling you right now, China has already dedicated itself to lead globalism into the 21st century. There is a speech out there that was given by Xi Jinping at the World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland. Now, if you're not familiar with the World Economic Forum, I I would strongly advise you to get very well acquainted with them because every January in Davos, Switzerland, the elites of the elites 
get together. And I'm talking about the billionaires, and I'm talking about the major heads of state. I'm talking about all these rich elites of elites. And there's a speech out there that you can listen to right now with Xi Jinping promising the globalists, which is basically what the World Economic Forum is. Just take a look at the name of the, of the, of the gathering, World Economic Forum. And Xi Jinping promised the globalists that China will lead the world into globalism. And that's why you have China making the moves that it's making right now. Because the globalists want every goddamn country in this world to be like China. They want the Chinese model implemented for everybody throughout the world. And what's unfortunate is that I don't think people understand what kind of totalitarianism that China implements on its people. I mean, lest we forget, the whole reason why China can produce, mass produce cheap goods is because they utilize the guise of communism to extort labor from their people pennies an hour. Okay? Pennies an hour. So what I'm just asking is why isn't anybody on the left who are supposed to be humanitarians, who are supposed to care about labor, who are supposed to care about all these issues, why aren't they going out and at least, at very least, giving China a, a, just an element of criticism? How come you don't see the left, these idiots that are out here bitching and moaning about how they want more shit like universal basic income and free education and all this other nonsense why don't you ever hear them criticize China and this is what we need to start talking about folks because China is not an American ally on the contrary the reason they have so much influence in our country is because they have purchased a majority of the corporations that we look to for information we look to for entertainment we depend on for uh, products and services. And China owns our asses. Why do you think Hollywood huh, is now all of a sudden making movies, putting China leading the world, China saving the day? Because China's already purchased all these Hollywood studios. I mean, let's be honest, folks. That's the whole, that's the whole reason why Harvey Weinstein is now being prosecuted for quote-unquote... Uh, I, I don't know what he's being prosecuted for. I, I, from what I understand, all he did was say, Hey, baby, you want to be a movie star? I'll get you a movie star. I'll make you a starlet. All you got to do is suck my cock! I think that's all he's accused of. And, it's, and it was all known throughout Hollywood. They would make jokes about it in sitcoms. They made jokes about it at the Golden Globes, for Christ's sake. But the reason everybody is now going after Weinstein is because Weinstein has no influence in Hollywood anymore since China purchased the production studios. That's why you've got all these women coming out with buyer's remorse for old Harvey Weinstein, because now Weinstein is no longer an influential power within damn Hollywood, and now you've got every damn starlet out here that used to be fucking open sluts that are now crying rape, now they're crying whatever the hell they're crying about when it comes to Harvey Weinstein, even though everybody in Hollywood knew this took place. That's the only reason why Weinstein is now uh, being persecuted and prosecuted, because he's no longer an influential power. I mean, do you understand this is the kind of influence and the kind of purchasing power and the kind of ownership that China has over our country? Why isn't our media, who is supposed to keep us informed, who are supposed to keep us up with current events, why aren't they, even, even as a footnote, reminding Americans that the whole reason why you're in quarantine, the whole reason why you're in lockdown is because of China itself? Because lest we forget, okay? All right, China has bought many of our politicians. All right, they, they've bought many of our politicians, for Christ's sake, man. And that's why you have a lot of politicians that are in favor of China, for Christ's sake. They think that China's, it's not that big of a deal. Are, are you kidding? I mean, uh, China is our friends. I mean, you know, well, why is everybody, why is everybody all wrapped up around China? And the reason is, folks, is because many of these people are on the payroll of China. I mean, a perfect example is Dianne Feinstein. All right? Dianne Feinstein is a perfect example of this because lest we forget, all right, while the FBI under Obama and Biden were investigating a campaign of a president or a presidential candidate in Trump, Dianne Feinstein 
had a office manager who also had, was a was her driver. This son of a bitch had been a Chinese spy, and the FBI told Feinstein this shit. All right, did the FBI raid Feinstein's office? Did they raid the alleged uh, Chinese spy? Absolutely not. And what did Feinstein do when the FBI told her that her office manager and her driver was a Chinese spy? You know what she did? She told him in a capacity to where, hey, look, uh, the FBI knows that you're a Chinese spy. I like you. China puts a lot of money into my campaign. They give me a lot. So, uh, you know, retire, okay? I'm Diane Feinstein. I know what I'm doing. Just retire, and you'll be able to continue to collect your benefits. And that's exactly what's happening, all right? The guy who used to be the office manager for 10 years, like over a decade, the guy who used to be the office manager for Diane Feinstein and the driver is now a free man. And if I'm not mistaken, I think that he's a lobbyist now. And he's collecting money off of the government for his retirement, for his service, quote unquote, with Diane Feinstein. FBI knows. The FBI knows that this idiot is a spy. Unfucking believable. And what's unfortunate is that now you have a weaponized mainstream media that has convinced a portion of the population that they deserve something because of either racial justice, uh, you know, fucking poverty, whatever they're going to convince them. And we have people right now in Portland, in Seattle, in New York, in Atlanta, right now that are on an indefinite, quote, protest. All right, an indefinite protest in the name of social justice, in the name of poverty. And you know what their demands are? More free shit. That's what their demands are. More free crap. I mean, y'all remember last year, uh, was it Andrew Yang? He was proposing a universal basic income of $1,000. Well, that shit just raised another 1000 because the latest demands of Antifa and Black Lives Matter, these terrorists, is they want a universal basic income of $2,000. $2,000 a month, free education. I mean, don't these people understand that the things that they're advocating uh, free, they're going to ruin they're going to ruin the prominence, if it isn't already ruined now, of a college education by giving it away for free. Don't they realize that, and these are communists and socialists that are demanding this, don't they realize that by demanding a $2,000 a month universal basic income that they're basically creating their own class warfare? And that's why these billionaires are all for it. That's why these billionaires are, are always Democrats. They're always Democrats. And you want to know why? Because they know the game. All right, like Warren Buffett during the 2016 election, he was campaigning for Hillary Clinton. Why in the hell would he campaign for Hillary Clinton? Because he knows that he is going to be that much more secure as the billionaire he is by pushing the idea that, well, the Democrats have to play big brother. They got to play wet nurse to you. And we got to give you this. We got to give you that. And meanwhile, you're setting yourself up to be a permanent underclass. Everybody who is advocating for a universal basic income is advocating their own underclass. And you know something? It's funny. This is what's really sad. This is why the public education system needs to be reformed, and it needs to be reformed fast. Because when you hear somebody like Warren Buffett say, you know what? We need to readjust our tax system. It's not fair that my secretary pays a higher tax percentage than I do. All right, that is the biggest bunch of shit I have ever heard in my life. Because what Warren Buffett is talking about, he's talking about personal income. All right, and Warren Buffett's wealth is not in Warren Buffett's name, okay? You know, his legal government name that's tied to a social security number, he's, he's, he doesn't have his wealth in that. He has his wealth in his corporation, in his Berkshire Hathaway Corporation, which I'm sure pays for all his Learjets, pays for all his presidential hotel suites, you know, pays for everything. I mean, I think it was Nelson Rockefeller, Nelson Rockefeller who said, own nothing, control everything. And that's exactly what people like Bezos and Bill Gates and, and Mark Zuckerberg and all these billionaires, that's what they're doing, okay? They know that they are pandering to people and trying to make themselves look virtuous by saying, you know what, I need a tax raise. 
You know, it's not fair that me, Warren Buffett, uh, has to pay uh, a different tax rate than my secretary. You want to know why your secretary is paying more taxes? Because, folks, in your personal income, when you get paid by your personal name via your Social Security number, if you make over $250,000 in your personal name, automatically 40 to 45% of that goes to the government. And that's why if you take a look at athletes and rappers and all these people who sign contracts and one minute they're all blinged out, they got a badass mansion, they're, they're, they're cruising around in Lamborghinis and Bugattis, and then the next minute they're in tax court or they're bankrupt, etc. Because nobody teaches you these things. Nobody teaches you that, hey, if you stay single and you're a high earner and you earn over $250,000 a year, 45% of that shit goes to the government and you can't write off much unless you're married. And right now, marriage doesn't seem to be on the top of the mind of most young people. So the higher you earn in your personal name, all right, the more taxes that you're going to get. So what do these corporations do? What do these guys like fucking Buffett and uh, uh, Bill Gates do? They let their corporations take care of them. Okay, because your corporation can legally buy anything, right? So like, you know, uh, if your corporation is filthy rich, they could buy you a badass penthouse in New York. They could buy you a badass Hollywood Hills house. Of course, it's the company asset. But at the same time, companies... Are, are taxed at 21%, all right? Companies are taxed at 21%, and you can write off from 21%. And you know what corporations write off? You name it, they write it off. They write off new equipment. They write off leases. They write off rents. They write off electric bills. They write off everything, okay? To where the corporations damn near pay nothing. So all I'm simply stating is, folks, is that when you hear the Democrats and billionaires try to claim that, yeah, we need to raise the taxes, these fuckers aren't going to pay it. They already know the game. They're talking about each and every one of you who work. All right? And if you're a single worker, and that's what I don't understand about the LGBTQ. The LGBTQ are the most taxed people on the planet, right? I mean, they're the ones that don't get married, typically, uh, they're single, they're managers of restaurants and, you know, hairstylists and whatever, whatever industry, the hotel industry, hospitality industry, etc. Okay. And meanwhile, some of these, uh, LGBTQ folks are making 80, 90, a hundred thousand, 150,000 a year. 45% of that goes to the federal government. And what the hell is that paying for? Huh? Is it, I mean, it isn't paying for anything. It's paying for the bureaucrats to bail out all the corporations that donate to their campaign contribution accounts to raid our tax system. That's all this is. That's all this is. And I wish people would wake up, but, you know, it's like talking... It's like beating a dead horse, dude. It's like beating a dead horse. Uh, Anyway, uh, I do want to remind everybody that is waiting for another stimulus, and I'm sure you probably need uh, a stimulus because a lot of people have been out of work. Uh, The hospitality industry has been fucking crippled. Uh, you know, unless you're an essential business, and I, I would like for y'all to know that this whole essential business bullshit is a transfer of wealth. It is a transfer of wealth. That's why you have this stock market not knowing whether to come up or down. Because what is happening here is that mom and pop shops, small businesses, or quote, non essential businesses are not able to uh, open up for business and collect revenue. So, what does that mean? That means that the consumer. The general consumer is forced to purchase whatever goods and services at essential businesses and who regulates who's essential and who isn't. The government. The government. And yet you've got fucking idiots out here protesting. Quote, unquote, rioting, uh, fucking uh, uh, committing acts of violence, looting, and all that other bullshit in the name of so... I mean, I'm lucky I'm old, okay? I'm an old guy. I, I'm, I'm probably going to die soon. I'm not going to be fucking here having to live with what's going to culminate after all this trampling on our constitutional rights. But it's a damn shame that most people are so fucking stupid and so ignorant. This is an element of demoralization. Like what Yuri Brezhnev talks about. I don't know if y'all know who Yuri Brezhnev is, but I would strongly advise you to look him up. We're at the phase of uh, the evolution of subversion 
we're at the phase of uh, demoralization in which you could tell people the truth. You can show people the truth. You could show them documentations of the truth and they will refuse to believe you. They will still refuse to believe you. That, my friends, is demoralization. And that means we are in a fucking very serious situation as an American population. And I, I fear for this country, man. I mean, we're, I mean, I fear for it. And, and everybody is just either you've got the ignorant pieces of fucking trash that are out here committing the riots, the violence, the, the looting in the name of social justice and poverty or whatever the hell else. And you've got everybody else sitting on their thumbs thinking that all this shit is going to go away. Thinking that this shit is going to somehow dissipate. Are you kidding me? These fuckers that are out here that committed the George Floyd riots are battle-hardened to do it again! They're battle-hardened to do it again! And that's why us as law-abiding American citizens, we can't protest! We can't protest this fucking silly ass face mask fucking mandate. We can't protest the COVID shutdowns and the quarantines. We can't do that because we will be met with violence by Black Lives Matter and Antifa. And if we defend ourselves, of course the media is gonna call us terrorists. If we defend ourselves, we're gonna be the ones arrested by these fucking Democrat municipalities and states. The globalists have us in fucking check. Don't you understand that? They have us in check. Wake up, you fucking ignorant shitheads. Good God. Oh, Jesus Christ. I'm sorry, folks. I didn't... I, I, I didn't mean to get off keister here, but Jesus Christ, man. Jesus fucking Christ. I mean, what else am I supposed to say? What, what, what else am I, I... I can only talk until I'm blue in the face too. So long, man. I mean, good fucking God. 